Since the beginning of life on Earth, mankind has experimented with plants to find out which ones were edible and which were fatal. Along the way, some were put aside for magic or medicine, and it is from these that many folk remedies evolved. Aromatic plants and oils have been used for thousands of years as incense, perfumes and cosmetics, and also for the medical and culinary applications. The ritual use constituted an essential part of the tradition in most early cultures where their religious and therapeutic rules became inevitably intertwined. This type is still in practice today, for example in the West, frankincense is used during the Roman Catholic Mass, and in the East, springs of juniper are burned in Tibetan temples as form of purification. But let's have a look where it all began. We will start in India, Vedas 2000 BC. The list of aromatics originated from India is extensive. The Vedic literature of India dating from around 2000 BC lists over 700 substances including cardamom, cinnamon, basil, spikenard, ginger, myrrh, coriander and sandalwood. The greatest contribution from India must be sandalwood, whose scent was says to use calm, sought by all the spiritualities from India. Other well-known essential oils whose origins are from India are jasmine, lotus, veriva, and patchouli. The dried leaves and stems of patchouli were used initially as moth repellent. China, 2000 BC. The very earliest porcelain raisins were found in China, and they were found to be charred. Later evidence shows recipes of incense from Chinese religious ceremonies dating back to 2000 BC containing cinnamon, styrax and sandalwood. China's most important contribution to aromatherapy was the citrus species. Almost all of the citrus species are believed to have originated from China. Also, camphor tree was a very important part of the Chinese civilization and was intensively used in perfumery and medicine. Chinese also have an ancient herbal tradition which accompanies the practice of acupuncture, the earliest records being the Yellow Emperor's Book of Internal Medicine, dating for more than 2000 years BC. Ancient Egypt 2000 BC. Plant extracts were fundamental to ancient Egyptian culture, being at the, at the heart of the belief in the afterlife and their relationship with their gods. Papyrus manuscripts dating back to the reign of Khufu around 2800 BC record the use of many medicinal herbs, while, other, while another papyrus written about 2000 BC speaks of fine oils and choice perfumes and the intents of temples where every god is gladdened. The Egyptians believed in the afterlife and that the journey to reincarnation is accomplished in 3000 years. Hence the reason why they took such a great care in embalming dead bodies, that way, that way the souls can find their bodies in a tolerable state after the long journey. Aromatic guns and oils such as cedarwood, oak moss, pine and myrrh were used in the embalming process. The remains of which are still detectable thousands of years later, along with traces of scented unguents and oils such as tyrax and frankincense, contained in a number of ornate jars and cosmetic spots found in the tombs. More research has shown that these essential oils are strong fixatives and antibacterial and antiseptic agents, which explains why their mummies look so good for the age. On opening the tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922, archaeologists were able to see one of the jars containing more than 450 gram races absorbed into animal fat. In ancient Egypt, there were masters of the art of the oil extraction and preparation and experts in cosmetology and were renowned for the herbal preparations and ointments. As distillation had not yet been discovered, a method of extracting the essential oils was by enfleurage and maceration. This was done by steeping or boiling the resins, flowers and splinters in oil and then they, they were wrung out in cloth until the last drop of fragrance has been retrieved. The most common oils used were moringa, 
bananas, castor, linseed, sesame, sunflower, and sweet almond oil. A complete iconography covering the process of preparation for such oils, balsams, and fermented liquors were preserved in stone inscriptions were preserved in stone inscriptions by the people of the Nile Valley. Most cosmetic remedies included aromatic substances such as frankincense, myrrh, lilies, pine, cedar, mint, and other herbs. One such remedy known as kipfi, the name means welcome to the gods, a mixture of 16 different ingredients which could be used as an incense, a perfume, or taken internally as medicine. It was said to be antiseptic, balsamic, soothing, antidote to poison, which according to Greek historian Plutarch could lull one to sleep, ease anxieties, and brighten dreams. One of the ingredients in Kippi was calamus. Robert Tizeron describes as having potent narcotic and sedative properties. Greece and Rome Natural aromatics and perfume materials constituted one of the earliest trade items of the ancient world, being rare and highly prized. The Greeks especially learned a great deal from Egyptians, Herodotus and Democrates, who visited Egypt during the 5th century BC, 500 BC, were later to transmit that they had learned about perfumery and natural and natural therapeutics. The Greek word aromatic describes incense, perfume, spices, and aromatic medicines. One of the most famous Greek aromatics preparations manufactured by a perfumer named Megalus was the legendary Magalion, which contained burnt raisin, cassia, cinnamon, and myrrh. Like the Egyptian kipfi, it could be used both as perfume and in the treatment of wounds and inflammation. Hippocrates, who was born in Greece about 460 BC and universally revered as the father of medicine, also prescribed perfume fumigations and fermentations. He was also able to ascertain that disease comes from something which is wrong within the body. A vast number of plants are included in his writings. Greek medicine as developed by Hippocrates was based on four elements, air, earth, fire, and water, and the four humors corresponding to the sheaf foods of the body, like choleric, yellow bile, sanguine, blood, phlegmatic, plang, and melancholic, black bile. The properties of the herbs corresponded to one or more of the four elements, air, earth, fire, and water. The cornerstone the cornerstone of Greek medicine was the concept of mental, emotional, and physical balance and disease was disturbance of this balance. Four centuries later, Galen adapted the Hippocrates' thesis on the four humors and built on top of them, which would remain unchallenged up to the next 1,500 years. Galen believed that it was not the nose which perceived the smell, but the brain. The Romans were even more lavish in the use of perfumes and aromatic oils than the Greeks. They also had an insatiable appetite for incense. They used three kinds of perfumes, larismata, solid, solid unguents, stimata, scent oils, and diapasmata, powdered perfumes. They were used to fragrance the hair, the bodies, the clothes, the beds. Large amounts of scented oils were used for massage after bathing and all, and of all the aromatic substances, Romans loved the rose the most. The evidence of progress in medicine, herbals or otherwise, was lost in dark ages, the Middle East, Islamic Golden Age. Between the 7th and 13th centuries, the Arabs produced many great men of science, among them Yves Sina in the West called Avicenna. This highly gifted physician and Scola wrote over 100 books in his lifetime, one of which was entirely devoted to the flower most cherished by the Islam, the rose. While it cannot be up absolutely if he discovered distillation, his works contain the very first diagrams of distillation process that we still use today in, to extract essential oils. It is thought that the very first essential oil was made from rose petals and that it was created by pure luck. Rose water became one of the most popular scents. Europe went into frenzy when they discovered 
that incredible plants, raisins, spices, oils, Cruzcaras had brought from the Holy Lands. Suddenly, the trades between the continents escalated on a massive scale. By the 13th century, the perfumes of Arabia were famous throughout Europe. 16th century, the Middle Ages and alchemy. During the Middle Ages, um, personal use of fragrance was considered a frivolous luxury, tending towards debauchery by church leaders and many early Christians even ceased washing themselves and were proud to reek of honest dirt and sweat. One of the most popular beliefs of that time was that fall odor was considered one of the most common causes of many diseases. Aromatic plants and little herbal bouquets were carried as protection against plague and other infectious diseases to mask the full odors. Gradually, Europeans lacking gum yielding trees of Orient began to experiment with their own herbs such as lavender, sage and rosemary. Alchemy was very popular at this time and distillation of all kinds of substances was one of the alchemists' favorite pastimes. By the 16th century, lavender water and essential oils known as chemical oils could be bought from apothecary. Apothecary. The period 1417 to 1670 saw the propagation of many herbals such as Great the Herbal, the Great Kerbal, published in 1526, some of which included illustrations of retorts and stilts used in extraction of volatile oils. But distillation was not still perfect. In the early 15th century, the Libellus. The Distillione Philosophia noted the tinctures of herbs in alcohol were impervious to decay and gave advice that herbs should not be distilled in vessels of lead. Um, Konrad Gessner, a Strasbourg physician, published a book, The Treasure of Eunumus, in 1559, speaks of essential oils have the power to conserve all strengths and prolong life. He was particularly fond of rosemary and his finding ascribed to the plant will be regarded as valid by aromatherapists today. 17th to 19th century, the scientific revolution and the rise of modern medicine. Throughout the Renaissance period, aromatic materials filled the pharmacopoeias. This is basically an official publication containing a list of medicinal drugs with their effects and their directions for the use, which for many centuries remained the main protection against epidemics. Over the next few centuries, the medicinal properties and applications were analyzed and recorded by pharmacists. The list included both well-established aromatics such as cedar, cinnamon, frankincense, juniper, rose, rosemary, lavender, and sage, and also essences like artemisia, caraput, chervil, orange flower, valerian, and pine. But then, plant medicine takes an extraordinary turn in the late 18th and 19th centuries because scientists managed to identify that perhaps it was not the plant per se that made people better, but rather a single active ingredient that made it so. Here they began to look for ways to copy and synthesize the chemical component to use in conventional drug therapy. Quinine, um, which is a medication used to treat malaria and um, babesiosis and uh, digitalis. The goxine sold under the brand name Lanoxin, and um, among others, is a medication used to treat various heart conditions. And morphine, a pain medication, were all formulated during this time period, allowing many millions of people to be healed. With the scientific revolution of the early 19th century, chemists were able to identify for the first time the various constituents of the oils which gave them specific names such as geranium, citronol and cinnamon. Herbal medicine and aromatic remedies lost their credibility as methods of treatment and by the middle of the 20th century, the role of essential oils has been reduced almost entirely to the employment in perfumes, cosmetics and foodstuffs. Aromatherapy in France In 1926, sound therapy or phytotherapy, as it was called by this time, took an extraordinary turn. A scientific paper by French chemist Ray Maurice Gattefoss was published about his findings whilst working in his family's perfumery business. 
Rene Maurice Gattafo severely burned his hand during an experiment and looking for relief from pain, he plunged his hand into the nearest vat of fluid available to him and the vat contained not water but pure lavender. He was shocked to find lavender oil reduced the stinging almost instant immediately. He was fascinated how much quicker his skin healed than he had expected and how no scarring was left behind. Catapos found that many of the essential oils were more effective in their totality than their synthetic substitutes or their isolated active ingredients. From his, this paper a new term was born, namely aromatherapy. And it continues to be the name we call essential oil medicine today. French doctor Jean Valnet came to hear of Gattafoss claims and started to make studies of, of his own into the plants. During World War II, whilst working as a surgical assistant, he used essential oils of chamomile, clove, lemon and thyme to treat gangrene and battle wounds. His scientific objectivity allowed him to carry out experiments with a very analytical eye. He worked tirelessly throughout the rest of his life studying plants and recording data. Dr. Jean Valnet was first to use essential oils to treat successfully specific medicinal and psychiatric disorders, the results of which were published in 1964 as aromatherapy. First time you see plant medicine backed up by actual statistical evidence. Holistic and modern aromatherapy. Madame Marguerite Maury, born in 1895, was an Austrian-born biochemist and beautician who became interested in what was to become aromatherapy after reading a book written in 1838 by Dr. Jabin. This was the man who would later become the teacher of Gattefoss. Madame Marguerite Maury, who applied his, his research to her beauty therapy in which she aimed to revitalize her clients by creating a strictly personal aromatic complex which she adapted to the subject's temperament and particular health problem, which is now standard practice in aromatherapy. 1959, Micheline Arcier met Margaret Mori at a beauty therapy conference. This led Micheline Arcier to devote her life to aromatherapy. After studying with Margaret Mori and Dr. Jean Wallet, Micheline developed some of the most effective aromatherapy techniques being used today. Another remarkable student was Shirley Price, who also had her own beauty school and essential oils company, which is now sold. The work of Balnay and Gottafoss stimulated and influenced Englishman Robert Tisseron, who in 1977 wrote the very first aromatherapy book in English entitled The Art of Aromatherapy. This book become, became the inspiration and reference for virtually every future author on the subject of for almost two decades. The development of aromatherapy after 1980 was divided into four basic strands. Basically, medicinal aromatherapy, popular and esoteric aromatherapy, holistic aromatherapy, and, and scientific study of fragrance. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, you learned something new today. If you like this video, then uh, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe please if you can. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.